Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a detailed look at Qualcomm's new PC processor, the Snapdragon X2 Elite. The Snapdragon X2 Elite was announced at the Snapdragon Summit 2025, in September 2025. It is the successor to the Snapdragon X Elite, which was released in 2024. PCs equipped with this processor are scheduled for release in the first half of 2026. It's likely that consumer surface devices will adopt this CPU. It is manufactured using TSMC's 3 nanometers process, and all components have been updated and accelerated. The original X Elite's selling point was built on three pillars, performance, battery life, and AI. At the time of its release, its battery life was particularly dominant, offering twice that of competing Raptor Lake PCs. At the launch of Copilot Plus PCs, the Snapdragon X Elite was the only supported processor. However, its lead in battery life and AI performance was short-lived, as Lunar Lake and Strixpoint matched it within a year. As a result, the terms battery life and AI are absent from the marketing slogans for the Snapdragon X2 Elite. Instead, the main selling point being pushed is a legendary leap, focusing purely on performance improvements. Now, let's look at that performance in more detail. First, let's cover the differences in the lineup. Three variations have been announced, with the flagship model named the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme. The other models fall under the X2 Elite brand. The flagship Extreme features three on-package memory modules, connecting via a 192-bit bus, equivalent to triple channel. The lower tier X2 Elite models use standard external memory connected via a 128-bit bus, equivalent to dual channel. Further differentiation is made through reductions in some features. Let's look at the CPU's single-thread performance. Official benchmarks suggest a 39% uplift compared to its predecessor, while independent testing by a Japanese media confirmed a roughly 30% increase. Relative to Panther Lake, performance is estimated to be 15-20% to higher, underscoring its strong capabilities. Of this, the contribution from clock frequency increased by about 16%, from a maximum of 4.3 GHz in the previous generation to a maximum of 5.0 GHz in this generation. The remaining performance gain is attributed to instructions per clock, or IPC, which is thought to have improved by approximately 15%. Next is multi-thread performance. The core count has been increased from the uniform 12 cores of the X Elite to a total of 18 cores in the X2 Elite flagship, consisting of 12 large cores and 6 small cores. The original three clusters are maintained, but the number of cores within each cluster has been increased from four to six. Qualcomm reports a two-fold performance advantage over Lunar Lake. According to testing by a Japanese media, the demo unit delivered scores approximately twice those of the prior X Elite. Performance levels are comparable to flagship class processors such as the Core Ultra 275HX, Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, and Apple's M4 Max. The observed performance surpasses projections based on core count and per core gains alone. Power consumption required to sustain this level is estimated to range between 75 and 125 watts. GPU performance is said to be 80% higher than the previous generation and 40% ahead of Lunar Lake. This puts it on par with Intel's 12-core Panther Lake variant in terms of graphics capability. However, only the Extreme model features a wider memory bandwidth, which is expected to result in noticeable GPU performance differences across the lineup. The biggest issue with the GPU is its practical utility. For gaming, several popular titles remain unsupported. For GPGPU use, such as in AI processing, the ecosystem is immature. At present, it is difficult to utilize, meaning its excellent performance cannot be fully leveraged. With a substantial upgrade, the NPU now reaches 80 tops, positioning it as the fastest notebook class NPU at launch. 
However, as with GPUs, the biggest challenge is that few applications currently leverage this level of NPU capability, making it a powerful feature with limited practical use for now. In contrast, Intel has chosen a strategy focused on area and cost efficiency, meeting the Copilot Plus PC requirements while reducing the NPU chip area by 40%. This suggests a judgment that while they cannot ignore Microsoft's branding, the NPU's performance itself is not a key selling point. Connectivity has also been enhanced. PCIe has advanced one generation, from a mix of Gen 4 and Gen 3 to a mix of Gen 5 and Gen 4. The lane count is now specified. Display output is also robust, supporting simultaneous output to up to three 5K displays. Despite this performance, there are two major challenges hindering its adoption, particularly in the enterprise and business markets, compatibility and security. First is application compatibility. Compiling figures from Windows on ARM database, the general estimate as of 2025 is that roughly 3 eighths of applications are native, 3 eighths run via emulation, and 2 eighths do not run at all. Furthermore, software that runs at the OS level, such as drivers and IMEs, is not subject to emulation, making it even more difficult for them to function. Microsoft applications like Office and major browsers like Chrome run either as ARM64 native or semi-native. Many x86 applications are also confirmed to run under emulation. However, even some major applications are not fully supported, with some apps in the Adobe suite failing to run. While commonly used apps may run without issue, full compatibility across all software is still far from guaranteed. In particular, in-house applications and drivers for industrial equipment often lack support, posing a major barrier to enterprise adoption. The second issue is the lack of business management features. Features equivalent to Intel V Pro or AMD Pro are not fully implemented in Snapdragon. As a first step, Snapdragon Guardian technology has been included. However, it remains unclear whether this will be a decisive factor for adoption in the enterprise market. Finally, I'd like to discuss a potential disconnect in its marketing strategy. As we've seen, the Snapdragon X2 Elite has achieved a legendary leap, with the significant improvement of CPU, GPU and NPU performance, representing an overall 1.5x to 2x plus improvement. In terms of performance, it has made undeniable progress, giving it an advantage over competitors. However, despite using the more expensive 3 nanometers process, an analysis of photos suggests the chip area itself has increased by about 25%, leading to the assumption that costs have risen accordingly. The smartphone class Snapdragon from the same generation are said to have increased in price by around 50% compared to two years ago. Even with conservative estimates, the X2 Elite may see a price hike of roughly $150. Given its performance, it's likely to be positioned in the ultra-premium segment, similar to devices powered by Ryzen AI Max, ranging from $1,500 to $4,000. One key question is why Qualcomm has chosen such a premium positioning. Windows on ARM still faces critical compatibility issues, with certain essential applications unable to run, posing a constant risk of functional limitations. The higher the price of the device, the more this risk becomes a deterrent for potential buyers. And while the GPU and NPU offer impressive specs, the lack of supported games and AI applications means much of that performance will likely go unused. For trial purposes, a lower-cost toy would be preferable. The high single-thread performance is appealing, and frankly, 8 cores would likely be sufficient. It might have been better to simply use the smartphone-oriented Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 in a lower-cost model. Thanks to exclusive adoption in Surface devices, Windows on ARM now holds close to a 10% share of the PC market. That said, it hasn't become a breakout hit, and with prices rising further, it's unlikely to gain mass appeal. From a pure performance standpoint, the hardware is excellent. But personally, the disconnect between its technical strengths and marketing strategy feels increasingly hard to ignore.